from being a sports photographer and a reporter to a sports director to now an evening news co-anchor, Brendan Clark has done it all at WCVD News 2. I talk one-on-one with him about his anniversary for this edition of Quentin's Close-Ups. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel and like Quentin's Close-Ups on Facebook. Brendan Clark, welcome back to the award-winning Quentin's Close-Ups. Oh, award-winning. I love to hear that, Quentin. You do a great job. I appreciate you having me. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you very much. I really do appreciate it. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, obviously, you are celebrating 25 years of WCV television. Yeah. Yeah. Um, emotionally, where are you right now? Oh, boy. Right now, it's just, uh, you know, the, to be honest with you, Quentin, I had to uh, I had to look on the calendar, and I said November. I started thinking, I'm, and like, you know, there wasn't anything that came up and said, hey, your 25-year anniversary is here. I said, I think I started here in November of 1995. And uh, so I looked back at uh, my old contracts, and I've been through several of them while I've been here. And I said, sure enough, there it is. 25 years later, here we are. So it's, uh, it's amazing to think that I've been here for 25 years when... Oh, I just lost you. Uh oh. Be here six months. I'll get a resume and then I'll move closer to, you know, maybe up north to where my folks lived or family lived or something like that. So I, I didn't expect it to be a 25 uh, year stay. I expected it to be about six months to a year. But uh, here we are, 25 years later. And I, I don't regret a thing. I love it. And from 1995 to 2020, who is Brenda Clark as a journalist? Oh, well, I, I, I hope I've grown, to tell you the truth, Quentin. I, I know I've certainly matured a little bit, but uh, <laughs> it, it, it's tough to say because, you know, some, so much has changed, uh, not only in the, the journalism and mass communications world, but in Charleston. I mean, 95, what Charleston was then, it was a little bit of a secret. As we know, it's not a secret anymore. And, uh, you know, I came here for a very little amount of money not doing what I wanted to do, Quentin. I came here in 1995 as a, you know, a news photographer slash sports reporter. And, uh, you know, about eight months later, I got the weekend sports job. Then I got the sports director job. And then I moved on to news after that. Never really saw myself back in the day getting out and doing anything but sports. Mm -hmm. So to say I know where I am is tough because I know sports. I could talk to you about sports for days upon end. But it was just such a learning process coming to the news world where you have to know so much about you know, political, crime. You need to know. It's a whole different ball game than what you have to know and what you have to be educated about than it is in the sports world. So it's just uh, it's changed and it keeps changing and uh, the TV business keeps changing as well. So just kind of rolling with it to tell you the truth. Yes, sir. And what has that process been like for you? Well, well it's been fun. I mean, uh it's been very rewarding to me uh, and the people I've worked with, the, the hundreds upon hundreds of people I've worked with. As you know, this is a bit of a transient business, so people come and go. But uh, the friendships I've made, it, it's been uh, truly wonderful. But in, in sports, you know, it was uh, I'm trying to figure out how to answer. answer that, ask me that question one more time, Quentin. Yes, sir. The process. Obviously, you had to learn about politics and obviously crime. Yeah. What was that yeah. process like in the beginning? Yeah, it was difficult. It was difficult. I kept, got out of sports, and it was kind of abrupt. I, I didn't realize how quick that was going to be. I thought there'd be a little more of a transition moving from sports to news. And, uh, you know, I sat on the desk uh, for the first time with Carolyn Murray yes. and uh, her knowledge and of the low country and knowledge of everything. I really told her, I pulled her aside and said, I'm going to rely on you a lot. Uh, at the beginning of this, just because I, I needed to, because she was so much up, more up to speed and knew the players, knew the people, right. knew the right. figures and right. that I knew, but I didn't necessarily know enough about. So I, I really relied on her a lot. And I did my homework. You yes. know, I, I, I read more. I, you know, I always I wake up every morning and you know, I read, I just read, I try to keep up to date. And now instead of just going straight to the sports pages, which I did up until about 2007, now I went to the front page of the paper. Now I went to the local section. Now I went to the business section. Right Now I, you know, different places on the internet that I went to instead of, you know, a sports website, I went to the news websites and uh, really tried to uh, uh, get my knowledge where it needed to be so I can, uh, so I could be educated in what I was talking about. 
let me talk to you about sports. What are you looking at these days on the pages? Because there's so much Coastal Carolina. You have USC. Uh, well, still- it, it, it's strange because I, I think uh, there were some sports that I thought I was a fan of back when I did sports just because I covered them all the time. So I said, hey, I'm a big fan. And, you know, not to knock on NASCAR, but, you know, I cover NASCAR every week. I was up on the drivers. I was up on everything. But then when I got out of sports, I just, quite frankly, didn't follow it as much. And, and so that that was one of the biggest things. So what I follow has been kind of, you know, back then when I was doing sports, a huge funnel, but now it's kind of funneled down and trickled down to really what my interests are. You know, I love college football. Yes. Uh, I love lacrosse. I love, I love, they're just sports that I follow much more intently instead of the whole kitten caboodle. I've kind of narrowed it down to what I follow. And how much are you following with Coastal Carolina? Because that's America's team right now, in my opinion. Man, I love it. I love it for Jamie Chadwell. I love it for him. You know, I knew him. You know, I was just getting out of sports, but I still had my hand in sports when he was up at Charleston Southern. Right. And he's always a very nice fella, always responded to you on social media, very easy to talk to, very easy to get a hold of. And, and to see his success up there, it's not surprising. I love it. I love that he's being successful up there. But uh, it's just not surprising to me. And to tell you the truth, the athletic director at Coastal Carolina University is a guy, Matt Hogue is his name, that I went to the University of South Carolina with and through journalism school with. Wow. And so I do follow Coastal a little more than usual. I don't have any real reason to other than the local interest in it, but I never had a family member go there or anything like that. But I went to school with this guy. He went to Coastal Carolina as a play-by-play guy on the radio. Then he got a, a SID job, sports information job. And next thing you know, He's the athletics director, and that year is when Coastal Carolina won the World Series in baseball. There's this first-year guy that I went to college with that I could share some other stories with, but he's always a wonderful guy. And now the, the success that uh, he's had up there is, is remarkable. I love to see it. And uh, he's got a good one in Jamie Chadwell. Unfortunately, yes. he's going to have to pay Jamie a little bit of money to stay there. <laughs> and Because I, I know what he gets paid now, and I know what he's going to get paid after this year if he stays there. And it still isn't in line with what other major universities will throw at him. So I hope he stays, but I doubt he will. And speaking of major universities, would you be surprised that he ends up at USC and Columbia? Would I be surprised? I, I don't know if I'd be Maybe I would be a little bit surprised because I think there's some guys ahead of him that uh, have more interest from the university right now. Uh, I think he'd be a good choice because he is, has been a head coach. And one of the guys they're looking at right now has not been a head coach. He's been in college football for years and years and years. And, you know, it doesn't necessarily matter because, hey, look, Dabo, his first head coaching job was with Clemson. And look how he's done. So I'm not right. saying that rules you out just because you haven't been a head coach before. But uh, for some reason, I think – Maybe things have cooled a little bit on Chadwell. It's not anything his fault, but I think they had their eyes on about two or three other guys right now. And do you think Wichita State will have their eyes on, obviously, Earl Grant? I saw him a couple of days ago here downtown Charleston. Oh, did you really? Yeah, yes, I, I don't know how Earl was. I'm surprised Stone hasn't snapped up Earl already, to tell you the truth. Uh, he's a quality coach. Uh, right. You know, College of Charleston, you can go so far, and we've seen that with John Press and the success he had with the, the program there. And, uh, you know, I think he's done a really good job, and the players that have come out and played in the NBA now indicative of his coaching talent. Um, that he's still here surprised me a little bit. Don't know who's going to contact him. Obviously, Wichita State has an opening from a former CFC assistant who was no longer there, and Greg Marshall. But uh, – We'll see. We'll see. I know people will come calling for Earl Grant. I think it's just a matter of when. Yes, exactly right. You speak of competition. I know I watched the package that Carolyn did about your 25th anniversary of Channel 2. And she said that Surprise. you got me. <laughs> I, saw got that. me. I didn't know that was coming. Oh. Yeah, I didn't know that was coming at all. They, they tricked me. I don't know. You know, you have a rundown, a six o'clock rundown that you go by and, you know, has all the scripts in there. And underneath John's sports segment, it said, uh, it said something that it wasn't right. It said uh, a preview piece for uh, some some story someone was doing here. I can't even remember what it was. So I looked at it and didn't think twice about it. So my head was down. I was getting ready to wrap up the show. And all of a sudden I hear my voice. And then I hear Carolyn. She's pointing a phone at me. I'm like, why are you recording me? And why do I hear my voice? And then I went and looked at the, looked at what was going on. But uh, I think everyone's just surprised that I've been here that long because, you know, I spent – five, six years as a weekend sports guy. And, you know, I first started here, I wasn't necessarily on camera. So a lot of people 
can't believe I haven't been there because I've only done news for what, 13 or 14 years. Right. So they, well, he's been here 13 or 14 years. They so don't remember. Some remember the sports fast and some, but yeah, they can't believe it's been that long since I've been here. I can't either to tell you the truth. Time <laughs> flies. Yes, indeed. Yeah. And she said that you, you stay above the competition. How do you stay above the competition now in 2020 with the social media, the internet, the podcasts? Well, it's tough. You got to do all that. You got to have your hands in all of that. And uh, it's not necessarily tackling all that. Um, my biggest thing right now is uh, the reputation that the media has, and, uh, and fairly or unfairly. You know, sure, every, every, every company or every business has ways they can improve. And I think, you know, media business has ways it can improve. But I think we get unfairly labeled. I mean, you hear that all the time, fake news. You hear that all the time. And a lot of the times it just isn't warranted. So my big thing is, is right now, sorry, is, um, is, you know, people think that they, I need to be um, a conservative or a liberal, like, which one are you? And I'm proud with the fact that nobody knows. Right. Because, uh, you know, it's not my job to throw right. out my opinion, Quentin. It's really my, it's not my job to do that. My job is to, give you that information and let you make a decision for yourself on what you are. So I'm not trying to sway anyone's opinion. I'm not trying to push you one way or the other. I'm trying to give you the information in an unbiased way and let you make an educated decision on the way you think things should be. Exactly right. And she also yeah. said this too, you know, you can start no, a great what else did she say? <laughs> She's always something. <laughs> she says that you can spot a great camera shot from a mile away. I, and this might be a silly question, but what camera shots really describes you as a journalist these days? When you look back at all of your montage <laughs> from back in the day yeah. to now, what describes yeah. your camera shot the best as a journalist? As a camera shot? You mean literally or just yes, figure? Oh, yes. Literally, well, it's <laughs> tough because, well, that's my whole thing. I've, right. I've come from a photography background. Right. I went through school. I interned at a couple of stations in Columbia. When I got out of school, I always had a camera on my shoulder. Mm. So I always think visually instead of the words and i always done that i did that i just recently did a story i went out on a shrimp boat in the shrimping industry and did a story on that and i did shot that myself i took a camera out there and it was just a one-man band it was just me out there and in my mind it was all about shooting what how how to make this look great on tv i can always match words to it but my my first thing is how do I get that video out there that's pleasing to the eye? I can always write words to match up with it, and I know what I want to say. But uh, that, that's the biggest thing. I've always kind of prided myself on having a good eye when it comes to photography and uh, knowing some different shots, not necessarily. I've lost that a little bit because, quite frankly, I don't shoot as much as I used to. But uh, I, always, uh, I always appreciate visual storytelling, and I always will. I think uh, there's never not room for that in local news is good storytelling with great video and matter of fact she says and with a sharp wit for wit writing quickly how do you write for the air these days uh, how do i write for it these days yes sir oh I, oh I i guess i guess it's second nature almost now because i've been doing it for so long and uh you think about different shots and, and this comes from sports too where you can you know you have a shot of someone you know in the stands you know, checking their watch and you get that and you put that in your head and you're like, how can I write to that? You know, time was ticking away for the Clemson Tigers. You know, so you always figure out ways to write to match your video. And it can be a, a very, I think can be very pleasing on the ear and on the eye when people watch that on, on news. And matter of fact, obviously you were a photographer at, I believe the ABC station in Wolo in Columbia. I was at, yeah, I was at both. I worked at both WIS, the NBC, oh. and WOLO. I was working at WOLO when I came here because, as you know, Channel 2 was ABC affiliate back then, and WOLO was an ABC. WOLO was, so I made the transition, yeah. And you told me in, a, in the last interview, I believe it was 2019, that you it was a move that you told me that wasn't mo money motivated, but you wanted to go somewhere else after being in Columbia for no. a while. <laughs> you can't. I mean, in this business, it's never money motivated. I don't right. think it can be, especially back then. I, I'd, I'd almost be embarrassed to tell you what I came down here working for when I came here in 1995 because there wasn't a lot of money. But, you know, I didn't need a lot of money and I didn't, you know, I loved it down here. But uh, it was, uh, yeah, no, it's never, it's, it's never sure i love making money and i i don't i think everyone in the world would like to make more than they do but uh it's never ever been about money with me 
It just hasn't. I like what I do. And as long as I do that, and I love what I do, to be honest with you, and as long as I'm happy and I don't mind stepping foot in this building day after day, then it's the job for me. And I've never, ever come into this building with a situation where I uh, don't feel good about working. I always, uh, sure, there are days, good days and bad days, but yeah. bottom line is I love what I do. And I think that's so important. And I've, I've tried to pass that on to my daughter as well. You know, love what you do. And because she's at that stage right now where she's trying to make decisions. And I said, I don't care what you do, just want you to be happy. Yes, indeed. And you were yeah. obviously a sports director from 2001 to 2008. And we talked about this just a few minutes ago. But if you were to go back and cover sports now as a sports director, what exactly would you cover? Local. Local sports that I, I've seen, I see how important that is, and not even just local sports, hyper local. And um, we did that a little bit when I was doing sports here, probably not enough. But the days of really being a, a feed jockey are over. Uh, you're not gonna, you're not gonna have a, a 10 second Will Muschamp soundbite at six o'clock that everyone's gonna tune into. It's just not that way anymore because people can get that stuff anywhere. The stories that win are the local stories that are pe and the people that are doing it. And it's, you know, it's, it's, it's not just sports. It can be anything. We have, you know, we have a big hunting population here, fishing population here, sports and leisure type thing. And uh, there used to be a promo we used to do at Channel 2 called Everybody's Got a Sports Story. And I still think that's true. Everybody's got a sports story. So uh, local wins the day when it comes to sports. And then that goes back to storytelling and good visuals. It's you know, it's all there for you if you're doing sports, it's all the good video and all that sort of thing. So it's, uh, it's, 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 it's a very important piece. I don't, sports should always be in a newscast in my mind. And I think uh, the way to keep it there is the way you tell stories and the way you bring the local community into it. Everybody has a sports story. What's that one sports story locally that you've heard of thus far that rings a bell in your ear? Uh, recently or just? Uh, oh, yeah. Recently or just uh, back when I was doing sports? Oh, recently. Yes, sir. Recently, what's going on? Well, I mean, it's, it's tough to say. It's tough to say because, I mean, you got to cover you got to cover sports. I mean, you got to cover the College of Charleston. you got to cover these teams. And you, you have to do that. And you have to cover South Carolina. You have to cover Clemson because they do have viewers. But it's, that, it's the, those other stories that, that matter uh, uh, to you. You know, and, you know, Caitlin Dambaugh doesn't get a lot of publicity. You know, right. she's a a local girl born and raised in Goose Creek and she's on the LPGA tour, yes. you know, and, and stories like that. A guy like Mark Epstein, who right. I don't know if you're familiar with, just wrote a book. His uh, you know, sports has always been near and dear to him. Went to, you know, he's, he's coached boys and now he's writing a book. Now he's doing zoom interviews. Those are the, those are the sort of stories right now that, that really interest people right there is uh, people involved in sports, but also, you know, it doesn't hurt to have a good, a big new, good news, in this last year when good news has been hard to come by and sports is that avenue is that outlet where you can have that yes indeed and mark i met mark epstein when we got the mlk pitch award back in 20 uh, i think it was 2014 uh, sure and then Great course, guy. i mean just a very yeah. passionate man and he's done a couple zoom interviews with two pretty uh, famous people and he's all about helping people and it's uh, it's wonderful to see Yes, and I met Caitlin at Halls a couple of uh, weeks ago, so that was great, too. Oh, did you? Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, great oh, yeah, lady. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. good, good. She's getting married. She's engaged. Yes, I saw her on Facebook. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. good for her. Yes, so indeed. Wish about the best for her and her family, all wonderful people. Exactly right. And I know yeah. back in uh, 2008, obviously, you became the evening co-anchor alongside legendary Carolyn Murray. You told me sure. uh, you were in a bubble, and you had to get out of, the, out of your comfort zone, and you wanted to grow. How have you grown in your 12 years as an evening co-anchor? Well, physically, I've gained a lot of weight. That's how I've grown. I've <laughs> you got to come out. with me. <laughs> I've grown out and not up. I, was, uh, uh, I don't know. I think it's um, a lot has to do with the, the people I've met and the, and the people I've talked to and the, the, the way I do stories now that I, I used to do. And, and I have to be honest with you, when I had a sports office, I was in my sports office all the time. Came out into the newsroom for the last 13 years. You talk to people, you have you know, relationship people with people you work with that are different. Carolyn is one of them. You know, I didn't really, I worked with Carolyn, but I didn't really know Carolyn until I started working in news. And so that's been a, a great relationship that uh, I cherish, to tell you the truth. But, um, yeah, it, it's changed the way uh, I've changed. And maybe my, I've probably matured a little bit, Quentin, to tell you the truth. Uh, grown up a little bit, knowing uh, that, uh 
you know, sports, you know, is fun, but uh, news it really can affect people's lives. And the way you approach it, you have to be very careful with it because, you know, you're not making jokes because uh, in, some, in some ways, you know, the people you're talking about, their lives aren't ruined, but their lives have been affected by something sometimes very bad, sometimes good, but, you know, a lot of times it's bad. So you really have to be mature in your approach and, uh, and uh, some couth and, and hopefully... You know, tell the story in a way that uh, is fair and unbiased, like I said, and doesn't uh, doesn't hurt the person maybe any more than they already are hurting. And how do you approach the top story of 2020? We know the COVID is the top story, but the local top story, how do you approach that? Well, how do we approach it? How do we come up with it? That sort of thing. Yes, sir. Well, I mean, we have, it's a team effort here. I mean, we have a bunch of people in that newsroom from... You know, our news director, executive producers, to producers, to reporters, to anchors. So it's a team effort. You know, we collaborate, we get together, we send emails to one another about certain stories. We all have, you know, we have beats. You know, Sophia uh, Desasor, very good friend of mine. She is one of our investigative reporters. So if you come up with an investigative story, you kind of go to her and maybe talk to her a little bit about that. And, you, you know, you, you bounce ideas and thoughts back and forth to each other and that's kind of what the news business is you get a lead you kind of look into it you, you keep talking you talk to people about it how can i do this story and that sort of thing so a lot of it you know we're in the communication business so it's pretty important to communicate with each other here in the in the station about uh, the stories that are important uh this might be a silly another silly question but how hard or easy has communication gotten so far in the journalism business how hard is it? Got, uh, I don't know if it's hard. I don't know if that's the word. I would say difficult, uh, different. Mm. It's different. Technology has uh, has changed everything. I mean, look, you look back 25 years and how we uh, gathered news and told stories and got the stories out there as opposed to now. And it is just uh, it's a hundred percent different. And uh, I'm not saying I'm left behind when it comes to technology a little bit, but these young kids coming in. They're on computers and screens their whole lives, so they're a lot quicker and smarter. And uh, I go to them for advice all the time. How do I do this? How'd, how'd you do that? And that, that sort of thing. And you learn slowly but surely. But uh, they're, uh, the way that we approach it now is just, uh, it's not just that news two at five or six o'clock or 11 o'clock where the story is. It's a 24 news cycle and it's, uh, you know, digital matters and social media matters and, uh, you know, and how you strategically place it and when you put it on there. There's no very little chance for breaking news that you know anymore. If you break something and you put it on Twitter, that's retweeted or the story, you know, it's you got about five minutes before everyone else is in on it. Right. So it's just such a difference now when it comes to news gathering, how things are, uh, are done and stories are told and how they're delivered. It's just all different. Like we have a reporter here and she does a great job. She shoots all of her stories with her iPhone, just her iPhone. The, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, you know, yeah, right. Who am I telling, right? It's, yeah, she does it all. I mean, and it looks great. You know, just a simple phone. And uh, you want to know something's changed in the last 25 years. 25 years ago, I had a 50-pound tripod, a three-quarter sack on my shoulder, a 50-pound camera up here. And, you know, you're lugging around in this 95-degree heat in the low country. And uh, you know, nowadays, it's just boom, boom, boom. Yeah, you're on your iPhone, you edit it, you send it, you write a script, and boom, you're done. And so it's it, it's easier than that. It's not it's not easy to tell a story. It's always right. going to be when you have to write it and edit it and stuff like that, and what you shoot. But the means at which uh, the, the the video and information is gathered is uh, technology has helped out a lot. And how do you hope? How do you see a new gav news gathering changing in the next five years? Uh, who knows? I, that's that baffles me. I mean, there wasn't a day, I mean, and this isn't a, a knock on the newspapers. They just aren't, you know, read as much as they used to. We know the struggles they're facing. But there was a day in my life where I never in my life thought I wouldn't wake up in the morning and have to read the newspaper. That's just my thing. I, I would wake up every morning and I would just read that newspaper. It was just, I loved it. And it was something I like to do. And quite frankly, I don't do it as much anymore because there's so... There's just a different way to get all that information. There's just uh, it's just out there. It's what like you said. You held up your phone. It's it's right there. So uh, that's the, that's the big difference. So I, I can't because I don't know. Sometimes I look at how we got where we've gotten in the last 25 years, and I'm amazed. And I, I don't know how we've gotten here. So to say in five years, who knows? Who, who knows? I 
But like I said, there will always be a market for good storytelling. There will never not be that need for good storytelling. You're absolutely right. And this uh, another silly question, Brendan, but what is that young reporter right now over at Channel 2 that really resembles you as a journalist right now? Well, it's tough to say. It's tough to say. I mean, I, you know, I, I look back, I look back at my time there and I, uh, you know, I, uh, I think I worked hard. You know, <laughs> you look back, you know, all these, you know, I hate to say whippersnappers or anything like that. <laughs> they don't know how hard we worked back then because they work hard. It's just a different way of working now. Yes. So you can't say you work harder than people do now because it's just different. Right. But uh, they, um, we got a great crop here at Channel 2 right now. These kids are coming out and they're not, you know, you hear about the Generation X and all that. And they're not, they're not like that. They, they, uh, they have a dedication to the business and to, the, to, the, to, the, to what they do. And uh, they like what they do. And they have a passion for it. They have a respect for it. And they want to do the best they can. And sometimes people come through here that, that don't have that. So I, mean, I credit the people who hire these people you know these employees because they've done a good job in, in hiring them and, and their work ethic is something that you can tell they were brought up you know they were brought up to work the way they are and have the values that they do and it's wonderful to see i love to see it in our young people you talk about values i can't right? believe i'm saying young people i can't believe i'm saying that. it's like i'm 90 years old Clinton, you, feel old. <laughs> you don't look at it a day old you look yeah, young. right yeah, day over 49 <laughs> yeah there you go <laughs> And you talk about values. I know that when it comes to your future, you told me in the last Quintus Close Ups interview that you want to stay here because you don't you're not looking to leave Charleston, but you also wanted the station to thrive. What is the station's philosophy for thriving these days? Well, it's the it's uh, the philosophy we have where uh, you know it's um, it's not necessarily uh, it's a good question. It's a good question because um, I think. I think you have to cover the news in a way. It's a good question. It's, it's a good question because I think we're on a, we're, we're, we're doing something right now, Quentin, here where we just get it. You know, the people here just get it and they, they know what they have to do. And you keep telling the stories. We, we've we got reporters following up on leads and things like that. So I'm not saying we're a, a smooth running machine, a well-oiled machine, but there really isn't any worries right now that uh, we're, we're not getting the job done. We have the people here that can tell a good story and, and can do the job and know the importance of, uh, and know the importance of TV news and the importance of the, the, have the, the impact it can have on the people that are watching it. So, uh, you know, as far as uh, you'd have to talk to the managers about uh, that kind of thing, how they approach it. But uh, they, I think uh, right now we are certainly, but we're certainly doing all right and doing everything we need to do to be successful. That is amazing. Well, Brendan Clark, thank you yeah. so much for your time. And again, welcome back to the award-winning Quentin's Folks Ups. Well, Quentin, I can't say I'll be here for 50, but uh, you know, God willing, I will be. And we'll see. We can do an interview then. Yes, sir. <laughs> and I'll be like 50 <laughs> by then. <laughs> yeah, no, that's right. Man. Yeah. I'll be a little older. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, sir. Uh, well, thanks. I, I certainly appreciate it. It's nice to be recognized for uh, being here this long. And I certainly appreciate the community having me this long. And I'll stay as long as I want. How's yes, that? Sir. Yeah, that sounds good to me. All right, buddy. Take care.